Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalia Zajan. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this match is going to be more typical. Lowry and Hokomoko on Trojan Hills, and Lowry haven't seen them in a while. I wonder how they're doing. Let's find out. Going for Kologibot Factory, pretty typical on this map, and Hokomoko going for Gunship Plant in the southern position, too, which kind of makes a lot of sense, and Lowry in the forward position, so it makes a lot more sense as well. For those not familiar, there's basically two star positions. I mean, you can start along the entire northern side, but typically in 1v1 you either start here and go for something aggressive, or start back here and go for something defensive. And the mirror, obviously, this is the same as this. So, gunships coming out right away. Blastwing coming out as well. Going for... Okay, going for the defensive position. Hokomoko assuming Lowry's taking the defensive position, which I haven't. But Lowry's going to be... Lowry, not Lowry. Lowry's going to be not aware of that at all until now. Also interesting, Lori going for solar plants, not wind. Which, for reference, wind is actually really strong in this map. Like, 1.6 to 2.5, it's super cost-effective. It's always going to be more cost-effective than an equivalent cost of solar... And if anything, it's going to be more cost-effective than an equivalent number of solar collectors at that elevation. The problem, of course, is frailty. But if you can protect them, yeah, really cost-effective. And Hokomoko taking advantage of that... Slightly lower, not quite as cost-effective, still more cost-effective, but not quite as, like, space-effective? Numbers-effective, that's the word. Yeah. Lowry setting up for a bit of a counterattack, but a Rapier coming in and, well, Rapiers beat Glaives. Just straight-up beat Glaives. There's not a whole lot that can be done about it. And Blastwings as well, just to help out, just in case. Defenders are, however, built up, so at this point the Blastwings probably won't be able to do much. It does slow Lowry's expense. It also lowers its expansion down. The expansion is going to be a bit slower than it otherwise would be. Ow! Ouch! That radar tower did not deserve to die. Those defenders, those treasonous defenders, they keep doing that. I mean, I know why. It's because they're aiming and then they shoot. And then the missile homes in and smacks into something else that belongs to the same player. But still, like, just the wrong angle. Wow. That is painful. Anyway, at this point, Lodery apparently hiding. Hiding that worker away. While at the same time, Hokomoko able to just scout around the map, see where Lodri's set up, see if Lodri has anything that can be easily killed, and Lodri going for scouting on Hokomoko. And Hokomoko, there we go, for the more typical amphibious bot plant. That is the thing. That is the typical thing, because, of course, Hokomoko loves their amphib plants. Always, always, always loves their amphib plant. Lodri going for a bit more of a construction there. And I gotta say, really overall, Hokomoko... Taking advantage of the positions in this map. There's not a whole lot to say about that because Hokomoko is doing something that's relatively straightforward. You know, you go to a defended spot, build up gunship plant. It's a strong factory. So you throw that out there right at the start and your opponent's forced to step anti-air. They can't expand as quickly. With planes, it's not the same. With planes, you can kind of expand around them. With gunships, they can just hang out and keep shooting you. Which is, that that's the problem. That's the real pain. And actually, you're feeling pointing out that, yeah, Hokomoko didn't kill that Conjurer there, which really should have been killed, because Conjurers are a big deal. Not with a Blastwing, but with a Rapier. It's been totally open for the last couple minutes. There's no reason not to kill the Conjurer, and killing workers is always good. You always want to kill workers. It is the most important thing to kill. More important than anything they build. If you kill them, that stuff won't be rebuilt for at least a minute or two, depending on distance from the main base and how many other workers are in play. At this point, there's like two or three conjurers. Three conjurers, so, okay, it's a little bit different. But now, Lodri's taking a lot of economy. I mean, they've taken the entire northeast side. Hokomoko nowhere near as fast in their construction. I mean, wasps are also way more expensive, but still. They're nowhere near in expanding. So Hokomoko really needs to start dealing with this. And also, the fact that they switched factories so early on means that they have very little on the board. They have one rapier that's patrolling around trying to find weak spots, but if that dies, there's nothing. Two ducks? I guess that's a thing. They will stop glaives, but otherwise, two ducks isn't much either. And actually, even then, one going down for basically nothing. Another couple going around to harass, but really not a whole lot that can be done about it. So Hokomoko at this point doesn't have a whole lot to harass with, doesn't have a whole lot to fight with. There isn't a huge amount of anti-air. A bunch of rapiers or banshees could actually be just built right now and wipe out a lot of what Lori has. Because Lori's assuming, oh, okay, well, Hokomoko's going for a bit of air. There are some gremlins around, but they're pretty spread out. Like, yeah, they're around, but five or six banshees coming in, 
rip him apart. Even Fire Mystic Rapier's coming in, rip him apart, no problems. And that Razor will actually be stopped. Very rapidly too, and one of the Gremlins has been spotted! Nice! That's really good for Hokomoko, that's exactly what they want to have happen. And they got rid of the Conjurer, there we go! Getting rid of that is pretty much the key thing. But also this entire expansion, as long as the Ducks don't kill each other, they should be able to get rid of the Razor, get rid of the rest of the expansion. I mean, at this point, Lodi does have a lot of defenders, so going for a gunship is still kind of intimidating. But, that was a good harassment nonetheless, and Hokumoko almost got on par. Almost. Production-wise, they actually are ahead. Lodi hasn't really been building up a whole lot of anything to build up their factories faster. We have a caretaker for Hokumoko, we have Lodi with just the factory and nothing else. And spending a lot of static defenses too. So Hokumoko has forced Lodi to expand a little slower in theory, but Lodi has actually expanded faster regardless. At this point, Hokumoko pretty much... Pretty much catching up. Actually, no, they've caught up. They're getting ahead now. It's just a matter of positioning at this point. We do have Rocco's up. There's still the Rapier. There are still ways of dealing with this. And though, wow, yeah, the Rocco's have no chance. Oh, if there were like half a dozen Rapiers. If Hokumoko just switched production quickly to Rapiers for like... 2,000 metal worth. It'd be a fair amount, yeah, I know, but still, like, half a minute. No, it's 1,000 metal. Okay, even 1,000 metal worth, just half a minute, get three or four rapiers, and then rip everything apart. Or don't bother getting the rapiers and still force them to retreat. That works too. At any rate, Lodri just taking that center slowly but surely, slow crawling through the center. Hokumoko does have the economic advantage and definitely got the production advantage, but translating that into a positional advantage is proving to be rather difficult. I mean, yeah, there was nice harassment over here in the northeast, but this center is being taken pretty hard. And Hokomoko hasn't really built up a whole lot. I mean, they do have a conch going over to the northwest hill. Sorry, the western hill. Not the northwest hill. The center west hill. But even then, that's, that's good. That's just not a huge thing. Especially given the units being used, the unit types being used. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that ducks were so slow, but they are, so that's not going to work. And of course, if it weren't for the fact that there's a lot of fear about building air units, because they are expensive, and yeah, there's a lot of defenders around the map, and not a whole lot of gremlins, though. At this point, Lori's probably figured, well, defenders are good general-purpose defense, so it's good to build them. But not a lot of dedicated anti-air. But yeah, that's the thing. Lori has the amph basically dead to rice. There's not a whole lot that Amphifactory can do from here. There are some things, but on their own, not a whole lot. I mean, there's gunship plants, so we could see drops, like scallop drops and such. Those would be devastating. A good scallop drop on top of this, or just inside of the base, done. That would be a massive blow. And Lori now, with their production all on par, I mean, this is going to be really tricky for Hokomoko to keep up. But yeah, with Rocco... Rocco, Defender, so the Defenders get rid of the Ducks. The Rocks also help get rid of the Ducks. The boys can't really do much. Scalps would be useless. Archers might do something. I feel like that would be kind of pushing it. I don't, I don't see that really working very well. They're kind of skirmishes as well. And Grizzly is super expensive. Though I expect that to happen anyway. No, not in queue. Maybe not. And Hokomoko going for a proxy jump out factory. Or not proxy, but a forward jump out factory. Probably for Firewalkers. I mean, given the defenses, given Firewalkers are basically what you build a Jumpbot Factory for if you're not going main Jumpbot Factory. Yeah, there should be Firewalkers pretty soon. But at this point, bunch of Glaze going over here. And Ducks able to deal with them a little bit, but not much. The Ducks that harassed the well, Eastern Hill, well, doing a pretty good job there. Actually getting rid of a lot of Glaze. There's so many of them, it doesn't matter. It's like a bloody salmon run. And now, some of them turning on the Ducks. There we go, get rid of the Ducks, the rest of the Glaves. Still eight of them left, or nine of them left, actually. They should be able to deal a lot of damage. The boys will be no threat whatsoever. And the main base is open. There's nothing here. A couple Blast Wings being set up, probably to get rid of this, because that was a good idea. But still, a lot of Blast Wings being set up. No, not a lot of. One. Two. At this stage of the game, that's actually nothing. Why am I saying a lot of? What the heck? That's completely wrong. What should be built, though, is... Like I said, something... Easily-ish. I mean, like I said, Firewalkers, that's probably the goal. Maybe Pyros as well. And there's that Blast Wind Explosion. Does manage to get rid of quite a few of the... Well, soften up a lot of the Glaives. That's the big thing. That was actually pretty cost-effective, all, all things considered, as far as defense goes. Hokomoko having the eastern side... I mean, Hokomoko has the sides. They just need to find a way to pincer Lottery, and if they can do that, they win. And... 
with that done, yep, Firewalker. Totally. I mean, that makes perfect sense. That's what you'd do. I just find it weird that there's nothing being built gunship-wise. Like, Banshee is just for harassing around. Yeah, okay, there's some razors, but not many. I think Hokomoko is probably really worried that Lodori has razors everywhere, which is a rational fear. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that it's... I mean, scout a bit, I guess. Because at this point, Hokomoko has basically said, Lodori, I'm not going for air. I've, I built it. It's done. I'm not going for any further. I mean, there are wasps being built up, but that's about it. Actually, they're doing a pretty good job building up, too. But yeah, that's all that really has been built for that gunship plan. Not a whole lot of offensive units. And honestly, rapiers... Actually, against the glazier, rapiers would be awesome. As a defensive force, yeah, rapiers would probably work really well here. The ducks are kind of worthless. The rapiers would also kind of help against these, but really, that's what the firewalker's job is. And the firewalker... A minute away from being done, that's not good. I mean, Hokomoko's resources, they're getting a little bit split between the Amphid plant and the Jump Bot plant. That's not what they want. And all the Glaives over to the north to stop this expansion attempt, which does buy Hokomoko a bit of time. I mean, let's be honest, these Glaives are not attacking the main base. They're not dealing all that much damage. They're getting rid of a little bit of an expansion. Not really doing all that much. It's defensive. It's purely defensive. And that Wasp's still able to actually get into a decent position. It could possibly harass a bit. I mean, we saw in the last game a lot of defense harassments. So, a bit of disagreement from the chat, from the peanut gallery, pointing out that Shieldbot would probably be a better option because of Roaches and Thugs. I don't disagree, especially given all the Glaives running around. For dealing with defenses, Firewalker is pretty much unparalleled. For dealing with defenses and Glaives and a bunch of other stuff running around just messing with you. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could, I could kind of see that. I, I kind of see where the point is with the whole Roach thing. And we see Hokomoko is in fact trying to go for offensive defenses. Going for the defenders in particular. I mean, they can outbuild. That's the thing. But the problem is that they can't build fast enough to get through the defender. Two wasps? Perfect. One wasp? Not enough. Hokomoko still, however, setting up to basically take out the northwest, or trying to. Ducks in one side, and... Well, okay, the wasp's not... That's not going to be able to do much, but still... The ducks are on the one side. So at this point, I don't know what Hokomoko can really do. I feel like Hokomoko... Oh! Did it? No! That's... That's Lori. That's Lori doing the thing Hokomoko should have done ten minutes ago. And get a mass of rapiers. Because... That's what should have happened. And now Hokomoko's lost their commander. And their ability to really deal with the northeast side. And... Also, not really doing... I mean, the commander is under some threat, yes, but... It's not much. It's not really threatened. It's not going to die from this. And Duck's going for some her assault, but the thing is, there's too many Glaives. Ducks work well against Glaives until there are enough Glaives that they don't care. And the Rapier is inside of Hokomoko's maze base, which should finish things off. I'm just really surprised that Hokomoko never really went for that. I think they were just so concerned about the anti-air, and they kind of wanted to get Lodri in a position where I thought, Oh, hey! They're going for air! Go for anti-air! Go for anti-air! And then go for the ground switch while Lodri's focused on the anti-air, but Lodri's anti-air was defenders. Well, yeah, that's anti-ground and anti-air. There's... it's both. So that was never really a problem. And a couple firewalkers are in play, but that's not really relevant. I mean, they've finally broken through that defensive line. But, yeah, I kind of agree with the shield bot comment. That would make a lot of sense. And it would also get you bandits if need be. Like, just a really good harassment force. Whereas jump up, what do you... I mean, you have puppies. Guess you have pyros. That's about it, really. I mean, you have... You have Valkyries, so you could possibly drop them. But even then... Anyway, Okamoko with one last desperate push through the center. Trying to take that out. There isn't a whole lot here. This jump up factory... No, that's it. Okamoko throws in the towel. I really wish they'd just jump back to gunships. Because, I mean, yeah, there was some anti-air build, but not much. Not enough that it would have been a massive threat for like 5 or 6, maybe 12 banshees. Well, rapiers. I have a personal bias towards banshees, but rapiers are also really good. So yeah, that was that. Really came down to not taking advantage of what was already built and building a lot of stuff that didn't actually work out. And Lodoy, on the other hand, just had the counter. And consistently had the counter. I mean, it really was just Rocco and Defender. There you go. Which is kind of funny, because I've mentioned before how Amphib Cloakie is kind of a weird matchup. It's a weird matchup because Cloakie has tools later in the game for dealing with Amphib really hard. 
but Amphip has tools in the early game that shut down Cloaky rating. So it's a really lopsided matchup. Depends on the stage of the game. Anyway, last match. Yeah, Hokomoko. Well, Orphelia is pointing out that Hokomoko is probably anticipating Lori would overbuild anti-air. Because people often get scared and overbuild the anti-air. And that's a valid thing. They just didn't have a proper read. Like, they thought Lori would do that. They didn't check if Lori actually did that. And Lori didn't really do that. Not in a way that wasn't also properly anti-ground. Anyway, next match, last match for tonight will be between Hokomoko again and Daimfreund on Fairyland. That'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 